me know down below which brand, which company puts out a lighter, faster disc brake bike than their rim brake equivalent version. The answer is none. It's impossible and it can never happen. Given the choice no professional cyclist chooses on the road, given the choice no professional road cyclist uses disc brake bike over rim brake bike, if they have the choice, there's people out there who have paid massive bonuses to ride disc brakes for a certain stage or certain whatever, or massive bonuses if they win a race on a disc brake bike. And now what we're seeing in 2020 is the teams, the sponsors are forcing the riders to only use disc brake. But we see Team Sky, who is the best team in the world, results-wise, has the biggest budget, is saying, no, please, no discs. We don't need discs. We're pro riders. We don't need better brakes. We, the brakes we have are good enough. If you need stronger brakes than Shimano calipers, you need more skills. Okay, so we're going to talk about disc brakes versus rim brake. I've done a few videos about this. Um, I was going to tell you, give you a straight up, this is a quick one here from Team Vegan here in Sydney, Australia. So I've got a question from someone talking about looking at your new Super 6 and they've got the disc version and the rim version. Currently have the rim brake version, the rim brake Super 6. I've ridden a lot of them over the years. I've got a few Super 6s in my stash myself. I've got currently 47 bikes. And I would say that the Super 6 is one of the best carbon bikes out there. I've actually designed my bike off the Super 6 geometry, my Pragma Glycogen. It's using the old Super 6 geometry, which is a bit more racy, a bit better, in my opinion, a bit more just aggressive hill climbing geometry. Now the new latest Super 6 with the drop seat stays is a bit more barrister, dentist, surgeon, banker bike. And it's a bit more of a higher stack height, a bit a little bit different. still fantastic, but it's not the old Super 6 that was, you know, the Peter Sagan, the Rigoberto Uran, the, the real Gracie Super 6. It's a bit more of a Synapse Super 6, a Synapse 6, we call it. Still great bike, all right? Disc brakes, man. Disc brakes, in my experience, not what I've read on the internet. I've been riding disc brake bikes. I was one of the first people in Australia to have a disc brake road bike when I bought a Giant Defy back in 2015. And uh, Dura Ace, Di2, Zip202s, the bling, a $10,000 bike. I bought two of them. I bought two of them in one week. Bought a medium, large, or large because I wanted to see different, I did a video about different sizes. So I do spend money on bikes. I've spent a lot. Don't have kids, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on bike stuff. I earn a lot of money from online, so I live a quite interesting lifestyle. And I'm, I choose not to be sponsored. So if I give you my opinion, it's not because I'm being paid by Cannondale or Trek or Giant or Specialized or Shimano or Shram or whatever. Yes, I do get some free product here and there, but I'll tell you straight up the deal. You know, Disc brake road is heavier, draggier, more sluggish, more maintenance, more cost long term now discs i do love discs i have discs on my cross country bikes i've been using hydro disc since 2006 when i got a specialized s-works epic with a full shimano xtr hydro disc i love disc on the mountain bike it's great it's more power you're bombing down the single track you're hitting a, a switch back you gotta wash off so much speed you don't do that on a road bike all right and so I've had Hydro Disc on Robots, I've had SRAM, I've had the Durais Hydro, it just doesn't work as good as the mountain bike. So it, it drags more, it's temperamental, it's just, it's, for me it's overkill. I don't live in cold England, shitty England of cold weather rain. If I did, I would go disc brake, but I wouldn't go Hydro, because Hydro is just, you get an air bubble in there, it's just faffing around, you take it to one shop, you do it, it's just, ugh. I like stuff that just fucking works. Right? I love stuff that just works. And for me, the best disc brake on the market that actually works all the time is the TRP Spire SLC. It's got two little piston things. You can, attention screws, you can just adjust it so you can fine tune everything. So if you've got a rubbing rotor, you can just boom, fix it straight away. You don't have to like, you know, faff around with bleeding and air bubbles and angles and uh, and also, you can run your pads really, really tight or a bit loose, or you can just customize it. And as your pads wear out, you can adjust it so you don't have to throw your pads out. Because with Hydro, there's not that much adjustability. It's very temperamental. It's very feminine. So it's cheaper with cable discs than Hydro because you can run your discs longer and you can run your rotors longer. With Hydro, man, this is a big money. 
this is a big money maker for a cycling right now is you get these Shimano Dura Ace Dix, they're like a hundred bucks, hundred bucks, and they're like you know forty or hundred grams whatever of, of alloy, and the, the the pads and stuff, it's it's, it's hilarious. People are like, oh, well, it's cheap and wearing out carbon rims. How much does a carbon rim cost in twenty nineteen? Like a good high quality carbon rim, it's like a hundred USD, two hundred USD from Yolio, Fast Sports, you know all these you know, Yishin light bike. You know, all these carbon beam jobs that do make a great product for OEM companies like Bontrager, Zip, Envy, etc. Even Zip are making their carbon beams in China now. Not the Firecrest series, but you know, good shit's coming out of China. It always has, and, it'll, and it's just getting better and better. So the, 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 the thing, oh, but my, my, my Envy wheels and my lightweight wheels, which I have, I have Envy's lightweight Zips, all the bling blings, DT Swiss, I'll, I'll wear those out. And I was like, well, why are you even wilding those expensive wheels if money's an issue for you? You know? So I just like stuff that is durable, lightweight, and uh, price doesn't bother me too much. But I hate throwing stuff out that's going to be three thrown out. And with rotors and hydro stuff, it just you know it just doesn't seem to work as good as, as good as I wanted it to, to work. So I do have gravel bike with uh, TRP cable discs in it. It's a bling bike, bling 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 bling. One of the most bling frames you can get. Custom painted everything. It's a Pragma Mawson. And uh, made by a famous OEM company there in, in factory in China. And I've got cable discs on it, you know what I mean? And I always used to, I always used to be telling people, I'll get rid of your cable discs, get hydro. And then I got hydro, rode, and I'm like, man, this is really temperamental. This, and I ride other people's bikes, and other people write to me, and they're like, Harley, can you fix my brakes? I'm like, yeah, oh, that shop will fix them, and that shop couldn't fix them. And I go, that shop, that couldn't fix them. And it's just like so temperamental. Do we do a wheel change? It's like, you know, it's crazy. So if you're going to get road discs, ask yourself, Am I prepared for the extra money? You gotta buy a whole new bike, whole new wheel sets, all that stuff. That's that's a fucking big outlay there. And uh, for the extra rotor costs and the pads, you know, stuff like that, and the maintenance time wise of doing it yourself, or blah blah blah. If you're gonna go discs, go cable discs on road or gravel. Just as almost as powerful, you know, but just fantastically easily to uh, adjust yourself. In terms of performance on a climb, rotors rub. They rub. They're temperamental. One climb they rub, next climb they don't. They get hot in the sun or if you're braking, they rub. But with cable discs, you don't have like that, that, that issue. You can fine tune it very quickly. In seconds, put an Allen key, boom, boom, go. You know? And so if you want to go disc, get cable. So if you want to get the latest Super 6, get, and you want disc, you're like, I want disc, I want to be part of the trend, I want to be part of the fad. I don't really need it. I just do road riding in dry conditions, but Sagan rides disc and I want to copy that. And uh, we all love, you know, copying our, our, our famous riders and stuff like that. So you get it if you want, but I don't think that it's an upgrade, especially if you're in Australia. All right. And uh, it's, uh, anyway, that's just the deal there. And I've tested it on so many people as well. Um, I think disc brakes are great for female riders, riders who don't have much confidence and they want, you know, don't, don't put your girlfriend or new rider on carbon wheels with rim brakes in the wet, you know, because they'll be a little bit dangerous, a little bit sketchy. So that's where disc brakes are great. But I don't really recommend carbon rims for most people because, let's face it, there's no improvement. There's no, there's no reason to use carbon rims other than aesthetic, you know. There's no reason at all. For braking performance, alloy's better. For weight, alloy's better. There's lighter carbon uh, alloy wheels out there. Unless you're talking the lightweight Mil Millenstein wheels, which I do have I do have those, but that's the hub and the spoke and the rim glued together. It's not actually, you know, just because it's carbon. It's a whole design thing. But you can get some super lightweight aluminium clinches out there. You know? um, so yeah, that's just the deal there. Um, the lightest carbon rim... We're talking 50 grams difference to the lightest alloy rim, you know, so no one's losing or winning races because of 50 grams in their wheels. That's just nonsense. I do like the carbon look. I do like uh, how it can uh, just sound, um, but I, I mostly buy it just so people can go, oh, wow, Duna has got Envy's, he's got Lightweights, he's got Zips, he's got DT Swiss, he's got YOLO, he's got Fast Sports, he's got Spinnages, he's got Shimano, he's got Shram, he's got Campeg. Dude's got everything, and I do... And that's why when my opinion matters, because I have everything, I've ridden everything, and hydro discs are a fucking pain in the ass. And I'm selling all my hydro disc road bikes because I don't want to deal with that shit anymore. And I live in Australia where it's really dry 
and I have disc brakes on my gravel bike if I want to do wet stuff, you know. And so I'm, I'm selling. I'm out. I'm done. You know, I'm ahead of the curve. The, the, the amount of and I, and I see, I'll, I'll go into bike shops and people go, "Hey, doing right? How you going, mate?" Or, uh, or, or you know, and uh, we the conversation comes up about disc. They're going to get a new brake, and I'm like, a "New bike?" And I'm like, "Oh, you're going to get disc brakes? Yeah, disc brakes, mate. You know, like uh, I was let, giving you a heads up. You're gonna, you're not going to enjoy it as much, man. It's going to be more maintenance, more faffing around, more rubbing. Get used to rubbing rotors. Oh, no, no, no. Like, I've got a good mechanic, mate. I've got a good mechanic. So it doesn't matter how good your mechanic is. Hydro discs will rub because they're temperamental. You can dial them in perfectly. Look at the world tour. Talk to some of the mechanics, man. I've talked to them. They're just like, Ugh. they can't go on record saying that because the sponsors will be like, hang on, we're paying you big money to use our product and you're trashing it. What's the deal? No pro cyclist out there on the road wants to use disc. None of them. They don't have a choice on most teams these days. That's why these, like Merida, Specialized, Trek, BMC, Focus, Factor, they're all forcing, Cervelo, they're all forcing their riders to run disc brakes. Cannondale, given the option, uh, Pinarello, don't even use the disc brakes in the races because it's like, why? But they've got a big budget so they don't have to bend over. The Team Sky have the biggest, biggest budget out there so they can just use what they want. But that's just the deal there. Um, just giving you a heads up. Hey, hey. Just go and buy the bike. Go and buy the disc brake road bike. Go and buy it. And buy the same version in the rim brake. You know, buy both. Buy two bikes. If you can't afford to do that, if you're a peasant, just kidding. But if you are a peasant on a peasant budget, then test ride. Test ride then decide. You know, everyone's a peasant at some point in their life. And some for many of us, we'll, we'll have more money than we ever need. And I can be arrogant and say that, you know. I can walk in any bike shop and buy a double whatever bike I want. You know, I walk into a shop and buy, I'll get that bike in that size and that size. Just walk out, cash, boom, see ya, thanks. You know? And so that's sounds it makes me sound like a total douchebag saying it, but that's my reality. You know, I don't have to worry about money. I don't I'm not a rich kid. It's not money uh, from mummy and daddy. It's money I've made myself from working hard, having a vasectomy, having no kids, living smart, not doing drugs. And so now at this point in my age, in my life, 42, I can just say straight up. You know, I can just tell you straight up what you got, what you're going to be in for if you buy that bike. Okay, proprietary seat post, good luck with that. Proprietary fork, good luck with that. Hydro discs, get ready for that. Warranty issues, eh, carbon, super light, 800 gram frame, good luck with that durability. 700 gram frame, good luck with that durability. You know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it's, you know, it's just, I just basically tell people what you won't be told in your bike shop because one, they have a professional bias, which is understandable. They don't lose money, their business, just as I have business as well. Two, they don't know. Three, they know and they don't really want to tell you. Or four, they know, you know, but you don't care because you want to buy something new and shiny to compare with your buddies at the cafe, you know? So that's just, I, I get that, I get that. So if you got this part of the video of 12 minutes in, then you're probably in the minority group. You're definitely in the minority group of, of critical thinkers. And so, yeah, so there you go. It's just, uh, if you don't believe me, go and test ride and decide. But you have to ride the same bike. You can't go and ride, uh, you know, a, a cheap bike. It has to be the top of the top, like the Amanda SLR Dura-Ace Disc with the Dura Ace rim, so it has to be the same, same tires, same tire pressure, same conditions of the hill. You know, you could blindfold me, and I can tell you if it's a rim brake bike or a disc brake just by the feel of the acceleration, etc. You can say, Harley, you want to put you an S Works SL6 rim and disc, same tire, same PSI. We're gonna, we're gonna put a little. Like, I can't ride. No eyes can I? Can I? Can I? Got to be able to see it. You could put like a little thing around the bike. So I couldn't look down, I couldn't see what was going on. I had like a neck brace. So people like, make, make neck brace really tight so we suffocate you. And uh, I couldn't look down, I could tell you without touching the brakes, obviously, obviously that's a giveaway. I could just tell by the feel of it. I, I rode a, a friend's, a cycling friend of mine, he had the latest S-Works Venge disc. And I rode it just up and down the street and I'm like, this bike is how much? It's like 15 grand or something like that, 12 grand. And I'm just like, it feels like a fucking slug. I literally buy an S-Works SL4 SRAM Red rim brake bike off Facebook Marketplace for 900 bucks the other week. And it rides faster 
than the latest S-Works Venge disc or the S-Works Tarmac disc SL6. It's insane. You know what I mean? It's, it's nuts, man. Some people, I see people buying these bling bikes out there. I'm like, man. And, uh, but again, this is, this is my personal experience. Four years using rim brake hydro disc road bikes. Top of the line. Giant defies. The Giant defies the lightest frame. The disc is the lightest frame they've ever made. And a super light frame. But you add the discs to it and it's just dead weight. It's just dead weight. Fantastic if you live in the wet. Fantastic if you... You know, can maintain your hydro discs for yourself, blah, 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 and you, you, you're you fine with all that. But just, I, I just want you to understand. I want you to understand what you're getting yourself into. And it's first of all problems, and it's all good. But just just so just so you know, just so you can say, I do what I told me. Harley told me. Just just giving you a heads up. And I don't regret buying my hydro disc bikes at all. I don't regret that, because in life, you have to learn lessons. And the fact that I can learn this lesson and teach other people, give other people a heads up, hey, just let you know what you're getting into. It, it feels good. So I don't have any regrets spending all that money on SRAM, Hydro Road, or Shimano, Hydro Road. don't have any regrets at all. I love it. I just love learning. I love teaching. And I love showing other people. Hydro disc road bikes are dead weight. They do not ride as nice as the rim brake equivalents. Test ride, then decide. And let me know down below which brand, which company puts out a lighter, faster, disc brake bike than their rim brake equivalent version? The answer is none. It's impossible and it can never happen.